Hey guys, it's Kristen. Welcome or welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, I am in my third and final year of a Doctor of Physical Therapy program graduating this May, which I absolutely am so happy and I cannot wait for. But in today's video, I'm going to be talking about five reasons why you should not become a physical therapist. And I just want to preface this by saying I do not mean this to be a negative video at all. The reason I'm making this video is to help people decide if they want to enter the profession. I get a lot of DMs and comments from you guys saying like I'm between PT and this other medical career, like how do I know which one to choose, or asking why I decided to become a physical therapist, which if you are wondering that, I do have an entire video about kind of why I chose physical therapy, and I will link that in a card above here. But in this video, I just wanted to give you guys five things to kind of consider and think about reasons why this might not be a good career for you or why you might lean towards another career. So without further ado, let's get on into the video. So the first reason you might not like physical therapy is if you are super introverted, but you know yourself and if you are drained talking to people all day long, being around people all day long, this might not be a good career path for you because you really need to be kind of on all day, especially in outpatient settings like the clinic I was at over the summer. Our shifts would be nine hours and we would have about 30 40 minutes for lunch break but other than that the whole day you're with one to three patients at a time and they're there for an hour so you need to be able to hold a conversation and kind of be engaging with them that entire time so it's important that that is something that you are comfortable doing so you know yourself just reflect and see is that something that you want to do is that something that it's kind of your strength because you really do need to have good people skills and good communication skills to be a physical therapist and there are a lot of other healthcare jobs where it's kind of less long periods of time interacting with patients like you might go in the room and see them for five ten minutes and just do your exam and leave it's not a bunch of small talk but with physical therapy you really need to be good at the small talk so just take that into account Another reason why this might not be a good career choice for you is if you like things very black and white. Physical therapy is very kind of ambiguous. There is a, sometimes not an answer for what is causing someone's pain. And in school, we're taught to just treat the impairments, which basically means the things you find at the initial eval, like decreased strength, decreased range of motion, joint hypermobility, stuff like that. And there might not always be a clear answer for why this person is in pain. And as a student, that can be very frustrating. So if you want a job that is more kind of X, Y, Z sort of thing, you might like a career more like nursing or pharmacy, something where it's just set tasks and set kind of rules and things to study and there is one clear cut way of doing things. Reason number three, if you just want to make good money. You guys can Google the average salary of physical therapists in your state. However, please keep in mind that this is average salary. This is not new grad salary. So just kind of keep that in mind. The new grad salary is going to be a good bit less than that average salary that you are seeing on Google. So the starting salary that PTs are making after four years of undergrad, three additional years of a doctorate, is comparable to a lot of people that are just graduating with bachelor's degrees. I just feel like PTs and a lot of other careers, not just PTs, this can go for a lot of careers, teachers, nursing, I could go on and on, but we do not, in my opinion, get paid enough for the work and the education that we do have. However, I am hopeful that this will be changing in the near future, fingers crossed. It still is a good salary and a comfortable living, but if you are looking for a job that just makes a lot of money, I would say this is not the route to go, especially with how long it takes to get there. Reason number four to not become a physical therapist, if you do not want to take out loans and if you plan on working your way through graduate school, this is probably not the career path for you. I know there are a few DPT programs that are like just on the weekends or hybrid, but that's not the majority of them. Most of them are like Monday through Friday, 8 to 4, 8 to 5 situation, and it really is a full-time job. I find time to babysit on the weekends, and I do make a little bit of money through my social media, 
so that is kind of how I have some spending money on the side but if you want to kind of work full-time throughout PT school in my opinion that's honestly not realistic depending the program you're at if you're in my program you definitely could not for example and if you compare this with kind of other career paths like for example I do follow a lot of nurses on social media and a lot of them will work as like certified nursing assistants and work like PRN as needed at a hospital and just pick up shifts on weekends when they're on breaks from school or if they're getting their NP that seems kind of flexible you can work like night shifts at the hospital and still be making a pretty good income and unfortunately with physical therapy there's not really anything like that you can do there is physical therapy aid physicians but first of all they make like a minimum wage and they are pretty hard to come by and they typically want people that can work full-time during the week which is when we are in class so I find those jobs tend to go to students that are in their gap years between college and PT school or people that just do that as their full-time job in general so there isn't really a good way to get experience in the field and make money from it while you are in physical therapy school. And the fifth reason you might not want to become a physical therapist, our job has changed so much over the past 10, 15, 20 years. As you guys may know, physical therapy was originally a bachelor's degree that initiated from kind of like a subset of nursing. It then moved to a master's and then in 2010 it moved up to a doctorate. So what we are allowed to do has changed and progressed so, so much. However, unfortunately, a lot of people that are working, especially those who are older and were kind of alive when PT was still a bachelor's, they still think that our job is still what it was back then. They don't know now that we have doctorate degrees. They don't know that we can see patients without doctor's referral. They just don't understand our education. So if you're entering physical therapy, you're going to kind of have to constantly be advocating for your job, for your education, especially in the hospital setting I found, just kind of letting people know what we do. And that can be exhausting, honestly. I think about sometimes what it would be like to be in a field that was very, like, set and people just, like, respected, but that is that. Another thing is if you Google, like, legislative issues with the physical therapy profession, a lot of things will come up. For example, Medicare is always trying to cut our reimbursements. They recently cut them for PT assistance quite a bit. So we're, we're constantly having to advocate for our worth and for our pay and reimbursement not to be cut. So that is something to consider. And since I did just talk about like negative things for the past however long, I did want to leave you guys with five reasons why you should become a physical therapist. Because like I said, I do not regret my decision at all. I was just making this video to kind of let y'all know some things that I think are important to know if you're entering this profession. But five reasons why you should become a physical therapist. Number one, since you are around people so frequently for long periods of time, multiple times a week, you do get really close with them, so those relationships you form, honestly that is one of my favorite parts about physical therapy and a big reason that I chose the profession in the first place. And you have a true meaningful impact on people's lives. Being able to help someone with their pain, especially if they've had it for a super long time, is always a super rewarding feeling. So. It's good to know every day you really are making a positive impact, forming relationships, making a difference. So that is a big reason to choose physical therapy. Number two, if you want to go in healthcare but you are squeamish like myself, don't really love needles, blood, all that stuff, it's a great way to still work in healthcare. Number three, physical therapists are in demand and you will not have trouble finding a job at all because we need more of them. Number four, there are a wide variety of settings you can work in, which I feel like people don't realize, but you can work in hospitals, in nursing home, in inpatient rehab settings, with pediatrics, with geriatrics, with neuro, with cardiac patients, with babies in the NICU, with women's health. There are so, so, so many specialties, and it is super easy to change specialties. You just apply for a job, and if you get it, they'll hire you. There's no, like, further schooling to do, you just kind of take your continuing education courses which are required for everyone in that specialty area to kind of learn more. So it's not like you have to go back through 
more schooling, anything like that. So that is awesome. And the last reason, number five, our scope of practice is expanding. So like I was talking about before with advocacy, although there are threats to our profession, there are also a lot of ways we can grow and expand in the future. A big recent win, like I said, was the direct access. So the recent ability to see physical therapists without a doctor's referral at all. Currently, some things we're trying to fight for is ability for us to order x-rays for our patients rather than having to send them back to their provider who then prescribes an x-ray. If we feel it's warranted, we can send them to get it, which that would be awesome. We're also trying to get access to certain medications like for iontophoresis, phonophoresis, things that we use in the clinic already, but how it works now is like the doctor prescribes them and then we administer them, but we're trying to get access for that. We're also trying to expand our access to telehealth services because we did get permission to do that during the pandemic, but might not have access to that much longer. So the scope of practice is increasing and I am really excited to see kind of the future of the profession because we've seen so many good cool advancements already and I think it's just going to keep going up from here. So I think that is all I wanted to touch on in this video today. Please let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. Again, I hope this didn't come across in a negative light at all. I'm just trying to spread information out to you guys. I would love to talk with you in the comments down below and I will talk to you guys in my next video next week. Bye! Ten toes in my bankroll.